is seeing you at story time this week. So I thought maybe I could put a little bit of a story time online for you. So we're gonna talk about friends this week because that's the week we're missing at the library. Welcome to my house. It's a little bit crazy. All my kids are helping us out. So you might hear them a little bit. Yes, I know. Um, but we're gonna try to do a couple of things like we normally do at story time. And then we're gonna be all done and we can go play. All right, thanks. So Bucky. let's see, I have, I have a few of my favorite stories that I wanted to tell you about. So this week, we were going to be talking about friends in story time and how to be a good friend. Well, there are lots of ways that you can be a good friend. Can you think of one of the ways that you can be a good friend to somebody else? That's a really good way. Thank you. That's right. So we can be good friends by giving other friends hugs or letting them take turns. But right now, when we don't get to be around very many other people, there are still ways that you can be a good friend. You can make a card for somebody and send it to them. You can draw pictures, maybe for some older people in our community. Um, you can maybe help make meals for somebody who's stuck at home or go to the grocery store for somebody. Those are all ways that you could be a good friend. When everybody's feeling healthy, you can also be a good friend in the ways that we normally think about, like giving hugs or high fives. Um, or and Sometimes when our friends are feeling down, they might need somebody who's a good friend. And I have a favorite story about how to be a good friend if somebody's feeling down. So if somebody's having a sad day or something bad happens, The Rabbit Listened by Corey Dorfield is one of my favorite stories to read to help us remember how to be a good friend. In The Rabbit Listened, there is a friend who is feeling sad. Something bad happened to them and they need a minute to feel sad about it. A lot of other friends try to come in and help them feel better. Uh, one friend tries to help the friend feel mad for a minute. Or one friend tries to be silly to help them forget about being sad. But none of those things help the friend feel better. It isn't until the but rabbit comes in to help that the rabbit really helps. Can you guess how the rabbit helped? Here's a hint. It's in the name. The rabbit listened. The rabbit listened. The rabbit just listened. And that's how the friend started to feel better. All right. I think we might be getting a little bit antsy. Do you want to try doing dance your fingers? Can you show me some dancing fingers? Do you have some dancing fingers? All right. Hey, can my dancing fingers be quieter? Okay. So we're going to dance our fingers and we're going to dance our fingers up and dance our fingers down. Dance our fingers to the sides and dance them all around. Dance them on your shoulders. Dance them on your head. Can you dance them on your tummy? And now let's put them all to bed. All right, we're going to read our next story. This one is by Karma Wilson with illustrations by Jane Chapman. Karma Wilson was so nice that she said that any story time ladies that wanted to could read her stories and send them to her friends. So this one is called Bear Snores On. Ooh, it looks like it did when it just snowed here the other day, doesn't it? All right. In a cave in the woods in his deep dark lair through the long cold winter sleeps a great brown bear. Oh, can you see the bear in there? Yeah, he's kind of hiding in his den. Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day. He sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl. But the bear <coughs> snores on. Can you growl? <laughs> An itty bitty mouse, pitter patter, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. Two, two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? 
as Hare hops in. Oh, Mouse, says Hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they blue brew black tea. Mouse sips, wee slurps, Hare burps, big burps, but the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums. Perhaps we can share. I've brought honey nuts, badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren. And everybody clutters in the great bear's den. Mm. Look at them all. They found a nice warm fire. They're having a little bit of a party. Mm. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. <laughs> he stroke, hair strokes the fire, mouse seasons stew, then a small pepper flake makes the bear ah, 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 choo! Wash your hands. He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. <laughs> and the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stops. Bear growls and he grumbles. And that's right. You've snuck in my lair and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping and I've had none. And he whimpers, and he moans, and he wails, and he groans, and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, don't fuss, look, see, we can pop more corn, we can brew more tea. Bear gulps, bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, Bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. All right, you did such a great job with that story. Thanks for listening. All right, I think we might need to move a tiny little bit more. So let's go ahead and do open, shut them. Are you ready? Yay. Open, shut them. Ew. Open, Ew. shut Ew. them. Ew. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Good job. Did you know that every time we do one of those things, that's called a finger play. And every time we do those, we are building up our big writing muscles. So if you've come to my story times before, you know that I'm a little bit obsessed with building big writing muscles to help us later on when we start to write. All right, so when we talk about that we want us to remember to read, write, talk, sing, and play every day, writing doesn't always mean that we're tracing our letters. Writing means that we're doing things like finger plays to help big up, build up those big writing muscles for us. Hi, guess what friends? I recorded a story time for you earlier and I included a little bit about this book, My New Friend is So Fun. And after I was done recording it, Mo Willems, the author, put out a thing that said that we can use his story for our online story times. So I get to read you this one too. So that's why this part looks a little bit different than the other part. Are you ready? My New Friend is So Fun by Mo Willems. Hi, Gerald. That's Snake talking. Hi, Snake. Have you seen Piggy? Piggy just met Brian Bat for the first time, and now they are playing. Fun! Brian Bat is nice. I know. Brian is my best friend. 
Piggy is my best friend. Both Piggy and Brian are so nice. They must be having a really fun time. Yeah. They must be having a super fun time. Yeah. They must be having a super duper fun time. Yeah. They must be having a, oh no. What do you think elephants worried about? What if they are having too much fun? How can they have too much fun? They could be having more fun than they have with us. More fun? Much more fun. Much more fun? Oh no, they both look like they are very nervous now, don't they? Oh, if they are having that much fun, then maybe they do not need us. I do not want to lose my best friend. I do not want to lose my best friend. Well, we must do something. We must tell them to stop having fun. They were running really fast and they stopped. Oh, hi, Gerald. Hi, Snake. Piggy, Brian, we have something we need to tell you. So do we. You do? We have to tell you how much fun we are having. So much fun. Oh, no. They look even more worried now, don't they? <coughs> we have been playing best friend games. Best friend games? It's best friend fun. Best friend fun. We even made best friend drawings. Best friend drawings? It's worse than we feared. We are doomed. Do you want to see our drawings? I must cover my eyes. I cannot cover my eyes. Poor Snake, why can't Snake cover his eyes? Oh, he doesn't have any arms. <gasps> Ta-da! Oh! What did they draw? Can you see? Oh, look it. Piggy drew elephant. And Brian drew snake. Oh, you made drawings of us. Of course, you are our best friends. Oh, how do they look like they're feeling now? They do, they look a lot happier now, don't they? All right, let's see. Oh, what did you have to tell us? Mm, they look like they need to think for a minute. Um, have fun with your new friend. Aw. Isn't that great? So when you have a really good friend, you can have other friends too. That's okay. Another story I wanted to tell you about today is We Belong Together. And the reason I wanted to mention this one was because the author, Joyce Wan, has all sorts of videos that she's going to be putting up on her website. So Joyce Wan is going to be putting new videos up every single day with drawing ideas and things that you can write. And I think she's going to be reading some of her stories too. There's a lot of authors that are going to be doing fun things like that while we're all stuck at home. and. 
If you want to search, search for your favorite author. See if they have some new fun things that they're providing. If you're looking for more fun things to do and you feel a little bit stuck, check out our website, worthingtonlibraries.org. Go into the Explore and Online Databases and you'll find a lot of new options there that, of ways that you can listen to stories, watch movies, stream some music, have a little dance party at your house, get some of those wiggles out. All right, if you're trying to not use screens as much, I know that this is a really tricky time because most of our stuff is online. Like me, I'm online right now. And I wanted to give you a couple of the ideas that we were gonna do in story times. So some of the things that you can do to work on being good friends is building blocks together. When we work together, we can make something much bigger and way more exciting than when we were building by ourselves. You can play board games together or work on puzzles together at your houses. Another thing that you can do, if you were coming to story time, we were gonna make some friendship bracelets. Now, if you have pipe cleaners and straws at home, that's all you need. Oh, and a pair of scissors. You probably want some scissors. So I have some straws right here and a pair of scissors. And I couldn't find a pipe cleaner. So we're gonna work with this. So what you can do, grown-ups, you might wanna do this part, but if you have a friend who's working on their cutting skills, it might be a good chance for them to keep working on it. It's pretty low pressure. So you're gonna take some of the straws if you're a friend working on it, you want to do it just one at a time. And you cut. <laughs> you're going to cut some pieces off. Just like that. Ready? <laughs> All right. So you're going to cut off pieces about that long. And you can string those on to yeah. a pipe cleaner to make a friendship bracelet. So you can make a bracelet for someone in your family. You can make a bracelet for somebody else that you love, but maybe you can't see right now. So you can make some friendship bracelets. That'll keep you busy for a little bit. The other thing that you can do, if you're feeling a little bit tired of talking to just the people who live in your house, you can make a new friend. You could make a puppet out of a paper bag. If you don't have any paper bags at home, you could make a puppet out of a paper plate and use it as a mask. You can make puppets out of a lot of different things. If you have an old sock that has a hole in it, you can draw on the sock and make that into a puppet. Check with your grown up before you do that. So this one, this is how you make a puppet out of a paper bag. You're just gonna draw some eyes on here, make this into the mouth, and then you could decorate the whole rest of it. And now, finally, you have someone new to talk to. All right, so those are some of my ideas. If you're feeling a little bit stuck, um, I also wanted to remind you of some of the resources that we talk about in story time. You can find some of Lori Berkner's videos and some of Jim Gill's videos right on YouTube or on their websites. You can also do some yoga with Cosmic Kids. That's always a nice way. I know we love them here. That's always a nice way to get some movement going. All right, well, my five-year-old director is pretty much done, and I think I am too. I hope that you have a great week, that you really enjoy your family time, that you have lots of fun and grow and explore, and I hope that I will get to see you soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye.